Hello, my name is Robert Sloan, President of Houston Baptist University. Thank you for joining me in this ongoing series of uh, the secrets of Christian living, the secrets of Christian blessing in, in doing what God has called us to do in the world. It, it's surprising to some. It's counterintuitive to many. It, 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 it would, uh, by, by worldly standards, these secrets, these practices uh, that we're going to look at of studying the scriptures, of worship, of living sacrificially, of doing God's work in the world, these things are, are, are counterintuitive, seeking contentment and not striving and rejecting the materialistic ways of the world. These are counterintuitive. These are not the practices of our world, uh, but they are the mysterious uh, ways of God and they promise the blessing of God. We looked in our last session at aligning ourselves with the purposes of God in the world, the mission of God in the world, which uh, reminds me, of course, as, as uh, all of us know, of that commissioning passage in the Gospel of John where Jesus breathes on His disciples and, and tells them to receive the Spirit and says, As the Father has sent me, so send I you. And that's the sort of thing uh, that we get uh, as well in the beginning of the book of Acts when Jesus uh, at His ascension uh, tells His disciples, they ask, is now going to be the end of all things? And He basically tells them, no, that they have a delegated responsibility to continue His work. They are witnesses to what He has done and has begun, particularly, of course, uh, with His death and resurrection. So the disciples, so we as His followers, then, 10 days later, empowered by the Spirit, and the Spirit comes upon all those who hear and believe the gospel of Jesus according to uh, the Scriptures, Ephesians 1, 12, 13, and 14. Now we are empowered by the Spirit, and just as His earliest followers, to continue His work in the world. And they began to live the life of Jesus. That's why the church is called the body of Christ. Uh, Christ is the head, Christ is the Lord, Christ is the King, and we are now His visible presence in the world. Uh, we are in some ways the living icon of the, of, the, of, of the person of Jesus Christ. Are we perfect? No, we're not. That's one of the mysterious uh, uh, realities. The curse is still upon the creation. The curse is still upon these bodies. And as the curse is upon our bodies, that, that means corruption and, and uh, sinful uh, temptation and pressure. Uh, is still upon our hearts and minds, and so we, we remain broken. But that does not negate the fact that we have heard and believed the gospel. We have received the presence of the living Christ. Christ is our Lord, and we are, this is very important in biblical theology, we are in union with Christ. And so His story has become our story. Uh, he died, we died with Him. He was raised, we're raised with Him. He's seated in the heavenly spheres. We are enthroned with Him in the heavenly spheres. So uh, our, our story, our record, our sin and guilt are continuously uh, taken up into Christ. We are forgiven and we are charged with doing the same sorts of things as the Father sent Him to do. He told His disciples, that greater things than these you will do. Uh, meaning, of course, that we are to continue in a more expansive way. Uh, his ministry, uh, limited as it was, uh, to, uh, to uh, Jerusalem and Judea and, and bits of Samaria and Galilee, a lot of Galilee, uh, our ministry has now been extended. The witness to Jesus through His disciples is extended around the world. The church just as the body of Jesus, the resurrection body of Jesus, was the beginning of the new creation, so the church, the body of Christ, participates in that new creation. Paul says this, If anyone is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, Behold, a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. We have received the first fruits of the Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of Christ who dwells within us, Romans 8, 9 through 11, is the beginning of the resurrection of the dead. Our Romans 6, we have been raised with Christ in baptism to walk in newness. The word newness points to the resurrection. To walk in newness of life. We are now living as the body of Christ, as individuals and as the collective body of Christ. The, 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 the resurrection witness and work and presence of Jesus in the world. And so the church 
is this beginning of the new creation. This is vitally, vitally important. This is the great mystery that, that Paul pointed to that had been revealed to him. Namely, that God, God is, is not partial. And, and this, this, uh, this statement is, is said with, uh, with mercy and grace, that while the standard of judgment is the same upon all, the Old Testament taught that as well, you're to show no partiality to the rich and show no partiality to the poor when it comes to the matter of law and justice and, and, and passing judgments uh, according to the law. So it is with God, the last great day of judgment. There will be no partiality with God, uh, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God has shut up the entire world under sin, Paul says in Romans 3, so that He might, extend it into Romans 11, so that He might show mercy to all. So God's purposes are, through the gospel, to extend His mercy to all. The church is this new creation, this body, this beginning of the new humanity. This is the great mystery that Paul points to that he says has been revealed to him. You see this in numerous places, but one place, for example, uh, is uh, Ephesians 3. Paul says, uh, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Messiah Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles... And, you know, in, in, in New Testament classification, the whole world, all of humanity, comes under this classification system. There are different ways to point to ethnicities and races and so on. Uh, we do that commonly uh, in our culture and in our, in our speech. But in biblical language, Jews and Gentiles, that's everybody. If you're not a, a Jew, you're a Gentile. Uh, Paul says, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship, Adam and Eve had a stewardship, humanity had, has a stewardship, Paul has a certain mission, stewardship, a stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for the sake of you Gentiles, that by revelation, there was a mystery, there was a secret, but now it's been disclosed, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery. I told you about this briefly before. And by referring to this, whenever you read what I wrote before, you can understand my insight into the mystery which has been revealed through Christ which in other generations, he hasn't told us the mystery yet, but he's going to, which in other generations was not revealed to humanity as it has now been revealed to Christ's holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. Here's the mystery. To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body of Christ and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. This is a shocking statement that, uh, that, uh, that Gentiles are on an equal footing with Jews when it comes to the stewardship of God, when it comes to the promises made to Abraham, when it comes to the, to, uh, the, the promises fulfilled in the Jewish Messiah who is Jesus. He's not just Messiah of the Jews, but he's the everlasting Son of God who is king over all the earth, over all things visible and invisible. So the church, the body of Christ, is made up of all humanity, all those who hear and believe the gospel who come to the knowledge of God through Jesus Christ. This is one of the most important things that we can ever realize as Christian people. It, it, it informs our, our treatment of others. It informs our understanding of what God is doing in the world. God has started the new creation. He's restoring humanity. He's reversing the Tower of Babel and bringing the nations back. And there is one criterion, commitment to the one true and living God, no idols, who has revealed Himself through the monarch, His Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen one. That's the beginning of the new creation. That's why James, uh, in the book of James, can speak with horror when he says, what are you doing when he speaks to the congregation to, to which he's writing? He says, some of you, when a rich man enters your assembly, you show deference to him and you say, come, sit over here in this high place. And a poor man comes in, also who has faith in Christ, and, and you say, here, you can sit in this lowly spot at my feet. No, in Christ, as Paul taught, We are no more Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, male or female. These social stratifications that place one group above the other no longer prevail in Christ. That uh, 
Paul says, for example, very clearly in 1 Corinthians 11, that, that uh, though the man was created first and then the woman, that in the Lord, in the new creation, both have equal standing and footing uh, before the Lord. Paul says the same sort of thing in, in Colossians chapter 3. He speaks of the, of, the, of the transformation, the restoration that is now taking place in Christ. And he says, uh, so don't lie to one another because the great renewal has begun. You are being transformed into the new creation, the new humanity, which is being renewed according to the image of the one who created him, according to Christ. Christ is the image of the one who has created this, this new humanity. It's a renewal. This new humanity is one in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. Christ constitutes the presence of all of us and all of us who confess Him are in Him. There is no partiality with God. This informs the way we treat people. It informs our sense of justice. It informs our, our sense of loving our neighbor. The brokenness of our world, the ethnicities, the racial strife, the economic stratifications, the dominance of power groups, the dominance of political ideologies wanting to dominate other political ideologies, or nations wanting to, to dominate nations, or tribes wanting to, to uh, ethnically cleanse and destroy other tribes, or various groups uh, claiming dominance over the other, is all contrary to the purposes of God in the world. We are no more Jew or Gentile, bond or free, male or female, but we are one in Christ Jesus. All peoples, all ethnicities, all persons who confess the name of Jesus are sisters and brothers to us. This is one of the great mysteries now revealed that the new creation has begun in Christ and is being revealed in the church. <laughs>